Unfaithful wives should be put to death. That headline didn't appear in an Arab country, but right here in a small town paper in central California. It was a letter to the editor written by a woman who called for adulterous women to be stoned to death. Is this another example of creeping Sharia, where the ideas of Sharia law become more acceptable? Joining me now from the Council on American Islamic Relations is Christina Abraham, who has studied Sharia law extensively. Thank you again for joining us, Christina. Many Americans fear that mosques in our neighborhoods in America are teaching Muslims that Sharia law should be practiced at any cost. Do you disagree? No, first of all, I think that we need to understand that Sharia law is just religious law. And to the extent that people use religious law or Islamic law to inform the way they get married, um, the way that they uh, write their wills and the way they enter into business transactions, that's a part of their everyday lives. But ma the majority of Muslims living in the United States don't want to see Sharia law imposed as some sort of a government uh, imposed obligation or something that's uh, enacted by law or, or anything of that Christina, sort. Christina, there was a report uh, put up by the New York Police Department that said, and I'm reading it right from the report, Thus, 81% of, of the statistical sample representative of U.S. mosques were deemed as either moderately, 30%, to highly, 51%, supportive of promulgating jihad violence to impose Sharia law. I would question that statistic very much. I mean, I, we have uh, been in these mosques. We have, uh, we're, we're very in tune with what the community is saying. And it's simply not something that's promulgated by the communities. I disagree with that statistic. Well, there was another story we did, uh, I believe, earlier in the year, maybe somewhere around February, um, where there was a school district in Texas where it was requiring, mandatorily requiring both Arabic language classes and also Arab cultural studies, basically indoctrinating our, our children. Um, there are those of us who are concerned about that, making something mandatory. I can understand as an elective, but mandatory, really? I mean, if this was a public school, was it a public school? It was. It was a public school. Uh, okay. You know, it, it's been I mean, since. If this is a public school, then it's set. The the curriculum is set by a board of by the board of the directors of the education. So, Absolutely. I mean, this is something where if if the board comes together and says, well, we have a significant Arab population here, maybe we should introduce the Arab language. Um, first of all, it's not sin Arab. The Arabic language is not synonymous with Islam. Uh, most Arabs in this country are not Muslim. They're actually Christian. So, um, I mean, you're talking about maybe perhaps a school that wanted to raise cultural awareness about right. something. Uh, I, I don't think that you should conflate that with Christina, Sharia law or creeping Sharia. Please weigh in on, on, on this Muslim who wrote this letter to the uh, Visalia Times Delta yeah. in California. <laughs> she says towards um, the end of the letter, hold on, she says, these slut women do not know how to say no to my judgment. These women who freely sleep with married men must be severely punished and put to death. Yeah, it was my understanding that this was a man who wrote this, but um, even if it were a woman, whoever it is uh, clearly does not understand the religion with w w within which they come from. And two, I I'm, is clearly emotionally disturbed because they even say in the article that they were cheated on. Um, and three, I, I have to question the motivations of the paper that published this. Because well, we did. We I mean, called is, the paper, Christina. We called the paper and they said, you know what, go ahead. I, we're going to go ahead and run with that story. We published it and, and they, they had no problem with it. Right. And, and, but why? The question is, why would we give people like this a platform to, to reach the masses right. with a point of view that is completely inconsistent with our values in society? All right. Going to say thank you very much for joining us, Christina Abraham. Thank you.